You guys, let me tell you guys why. Even when Sabrina Spellman's away, Salem still happens to get his messy ass in trouble just by being nosy sometime like the rest of us. So, Chilling Adventures of Salem, part one, short story. Let's get into this shit. Now, y'all know how these stories are a start out. It's always around midnight, twilight, or dusk. Because, you know, a bitch got to set the scene. And like I told y'all, Sabrina's away, so Salem, he's just out and about. He's in a field, and he's just hunting mice right now. Now, if y'all remember, Salem, you know, he, he a bougie bitch. He doesn't really like to eat mice. So he's just pretty much torturing him, or trying to teach him a lesson in a Salem-type way. And so y'all know, when it's a Salem-type way, you either gonna have dramatics or irony. But pretty much, Salem is teaching this rat, because even rats can learn lessons. No matter how far you fall, your position on the food chain is not always completely out of your control. Ooh, that shit could be a metaphor. So, however, as Salem got the rat by the back of his neck and stuff like that and just about to torture, something like catches his attention and the rat is like, bitch, I'm out of here. I'm not finna stay around and let be your male. Salem senses a strange man in the neighborhood. And we all know whenever they're shadowy like that, you know they up to no good. They are up to no good. And as we know, Salem wasn't always a cat and he's been alive for 300 years now. So he can sense magical essence. And Salem's like, bitch, I wasn't always a cat. I can sense a sorcerer when I see one. Just motherfuckers up to no good. So Salem's watching the man from a distance and he hears movement in his briefcase. And he sees the man taking down lost pet pictures. Which is odd because bitch, what the fuck is a sorcerer doing taking down people's lost dogs and cats? You up to no good. And you ain't even good about it. You ain't even suspicious. Nigga got a fedora on. If I see somebody walking down the street in a fedora and it's out of a casual nature, something's up. Because bitch, what are you doing? And Salem's like, a practitioner of the black arts concerning himself with missing pets posters? Bitch, this is a red flag. So, even though this is none of my business, and I'd be safe minding my business, I'm not gonna do that, because otherwise I wouldn't have a plot of the story. And honestly, that's where Sabrina gets that shit from. Because you know Sabrina's gonna jump into some shit that don't got nothing to do with her. Like which, like familiar. And see, Salem, he's a nosy bitch like the rest of us. So he's like, this mystery is too tempting. He's like, um, a darker version of like the Scooby doing the mystery machine game, except like with Satan. However, the gag is when Salem goes to pursue the sorcerer, you know, keeping a fair distance, these pets come from the alleyway and like, what's going on? And let's be real, these pets are not giving all dogs go to heaven. They're giving more like pet cemetery. And you know, Salem, he's like, bitch, can I help you? I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I'm a 300 year old cat. And these demonic ass pets are like, we don't give a fuck about that. Why are you following our mask? And they get to scrapping. But Salem's like, bitch, I've dealt with the devil himself. I can deal with you hellhound. So Salem goes straight for the bird and hit her with them oo wopty woos. And Salem's like, check, please. But they like, bitch, we ain't done with you, ho. And they all jump Salem. And they shred his ass the fuck up. Part two down below. So as we left off, Salem was getting his ass whooped just from being nosy. See, this is a good metaphor of mind your own business before that business minds you. So after waking up from that ass whooping, Salem wakes up in a cage, kind of like a kennel type thing. And you see, there's all types of animals, rabbits, cats, other dogs, just crazy shit. Then he hears somebody light a match and turn on a candle. Well, light a candle. Y'all get what I mean. And he sees that same mysterious sorcerer, the one that had the fedora on, red flag number one. He has a puppy on an altar right here, and he has a circle and lit by candle. He's talking about, I think we're ready to begin. Well, what are you about to do? Because I missed this episode of Clifford's Puppy Days. If you know, you know. So the sorcerer returns to the dog, and he's like, honey, don't worry. I got you, because the blessing of a bad one, I don't really know how to say that demon's name, and I'm really not trying to. He's like, that demon's blessing may be cruel, and the agony may be excruciating, honey, but the pop. And look how cute the little puppy is. I don't know what kind of puppy that is. What is that, a pit bull man? But he's telling the dog as if the dog understands, like, you know, once the agony's done, the true power begins. And look at the puppy. He just looks so scared, but he's like, shit, I'm here. And then the sorcerer, you know, him and all his sorcerer supreme ass get up and shit like that. He starts doing the chant, you know, to bring in invoking the spirit. He pretty much says about the dogs and the animals, because this is how we feel about all animals. He says, take this worthless forgotten vessel and infuse it with your unholy vitality. And the next thing you know, his magic starts to activate and all hell breaks loose. Even though that's some demonic ass magic, that's a pretty pink color. And Salem's like, I'll be damned, this motherfucker's doing a summoning. And as y'all know about the comics I recapped last year, all on my TikTok, look on the tabs. You know him, he's used to shit like that from living with the Spellman, cause them hoes is off the chain. 
And this uh, magician, this sorcerer, he's trying to uh, spread malevolence with these demons. I mean, that's kind of obvious because what good are you going to spread with him? And boom, the dog is possessed. So this dog goes from a pup named Scooby-Doo to Pet Cemetery just that instant. And the sorcerer just pretty much tells them, welcome to the land of man. We have so much work to do because he's going to use these demons he's putting in these animals to do his bidding. And as you see, the dog joins the other legions of demons. So this guy ain't, ain't new to this. He's been doing this for a while. He's been on his bullshit. So later on that night, while the demons are sleeping, Salem's like, bitch, I got some questions about this bullshit. Why would you go from reigning in hell being a free demon? Well, not really free if you're in hell, but I guess if they like it, I love it. But not really. He's like, why would you go from being a demon reigning in hell to be imprisoned in an animal vessel in the man's world where that is like a lower version? Salem's like, bitch, if I was you, I wouldn't tolerate that shit. So pretty much remember, Salem's smart. He's been doing this for 300 years. He's trying to get into all their heads like, bitch, why are you becoming an animal? You should be the one in reigning and in charge of him. But he's putting you in an animal's vessel where he controls you. You see, you gotta use that reverse psychology. But they ain't buying it because they like that dark shit. They're like, bitch, leave us the fuck alone and wait for your turn. So like I said, Salem's trying to talk all the other possessed animals into like teaming up and like, you know, you don't have to be a dog in life when you were a demon in hell. Why would you go from reigning in hell to becoming an animal ruled by man? It don't make sense, but you know, when somebody ain't ready for change, you can tell them to your black and blue in the face. It ain't gonna do shit for you or them. Some of the demons in the animal form were shocked that Salem could talk. They was like, a talking cat? Some of the animals are like, a talking cat? So they already know there's something a little different and extra about Salem. He is not like the stray animals that that sorcerer was kidnapping off the street. So it's a little later now, and then the sorcerer comes back because he recharged his his energy and he decides to pick Salem and he was like Salem are you ready to become so much more than what you are and in the back of my head I was like y'all don't you don't even know what you're getting yourself in because that bitch is already enough and of course the other animals are watching because you know that's what haters do and look at him grabbing Salem like that no wonder he had on a fedora so he takes Salem out and he thinks he's about to you know do that abracadabra hocus pocus shit on Salem but see the problem is he don't know and you would think by him being a sorcerer in the black art you would just think by how old Salem is and by him being a sorcerer of the black art, he should be able to sense, you would think, that with Salem's essence, there is more to this cat than meets the eye. Like this pussy scratched back. I mean, not like those girls did him in Salem Village, if you know, you know. So fast forward, the sorcerer begins to chant and he starts doing the ritual on Salem. And of course, the animals that aren't possessed yet are going crazy because as y'all know, as in real life, animals can always sense dark energy or spirit. And so the portal starts to open and the demon starts to come for Salem to possess him. And the more the dark sorcerer chants, the more he sees the spirit isn't going into Salem's vessel. He's like, take this worthless forgotten vessel. But little does he know, Salem's vessel is already taken as we've known. And look, at Salem's just sitting there like the baddest motherfucking cat on the block. See, I always like to say this. Some people are Garfield people. I am a Salem person, this version of Salem, not like the goofy Saturday morning Salem, even though he's iconic in himself. Like, look at him just sitting there like the baddest bitch. Like, you can't tell him nothing. You could have 10 million people against him, and he's still gonna sit there like he's that bitch. And look down here, Salem's just rubbing it in his face. He's like, such a shame, so tragic, such a terrible mistake. Cause you didn't fucked with the wrong bitch now. And the sorcerer's like, bitch, what the fuck is going on? How can you talk, oh? And Salem's like, bitch, I'm no mere cat. He's like, I am myself a magician, cursed to hold this form long, long ago. He's like, pretty much, you want to put demons in these animals, but honey, I am already a cursed soul inhabiting this vessel. Salem's like, I'm guessing these demons that you've been summoning always want a vessel when you summon. And since they're not going to get me, I guess you didn't fucked up and made them mad. Because now they're not getting what you summoned them for. And you know how demons are when you don't give them their right. You just did a cosmic fuck up. Part four in the finale down below. If you're just coming into this part, play catch up. So now we're like, Salem's like, bitch, you done fucked up now. Salem's like, you done messed up now because you done summoned demons now and you can't give them the offering that they require for you to summon them. And you know, Salem, he's always so melancholy, but he's like deliciously evil. So he's like, oh, the humanity. He's like one of them Shakespearean ass cat and still a colonial fuck boy. If you remember from last year, you know, some things still don't change. And as you see these spirits, you know, you see these spirits, huh, they start going crazy and knocking over the candles and causing the whole place to set on fire because bitch, you didn't give me what you promised me. And when you don't give a spirit or whatever you're working with, what you promised them, that's equivalent to somebody owing you money and you see them in some new shit every day. Like you just want your ass whooped now like the spirit dragging him is giving me very much a dr facilier and the princess and the frog the ending when he got dragged to hell 
Note to self, that was a good movie. Watch that later. So he's getting dragged in the fire. And see, this is a good lesson too. I'm one of those people, I don't care what you dabble in. Dabble in whatever makes you happy. However, don't dabble in shit and then be scared to pay the price. You know what they say, with great power comes great sacrifice. And half the time the sacrifice is you or your morale. And he's asking these animals to help him after you just possessed them. And he's like, help me you wretched beast. Bitch, I ain't helping you out for shit. And the animals are like, bitch, who is you calling wretched? Oh, wretched. And the animals are just standing here because fuck you. And you know, Salem can't wait to relish in his misery. He's like, I don't think they want to obey you no more. And due to the room being on fire, uh, the animals' bodies are dying, unfortunately. And without a vessel, the spirit or the demon cannot be contained. So as you see, the demon spirits are being expelled. And the sorcerer is like, y'all can't leave those animals' bodies even though they're being burnt alive. He's like, I put a spell on y'all and I gave y'all the vessel. If you break this pact, y'all die. And Salem's like, they don't give a fuck about that shit. One of the demons say to Salem, oh bitch, we care. Demons care about breaking pats. That's how they always be trying to manipulate. Them. But he's like, none of us could stomach living as an animal. So nigga, you rather be in hell than live as an animal? Okay. And Salem's like, well, it's been doing me good for the last 300 years. And Salem's like, okay, bitch, enjoy damnation then. And this dark ass sorcerer who's on fire, he's still trying to claw his way up the stairs and get out. But nigga, it's too late. It's time for you to reap what you sow. Salem's like, bitch, where you think you going, hoe? Salem's like, I think some of your friends want to have a word with your ass and your soul. The animals are like, bon appetit, bitch. It's kind of like Scar in The Lion King when he got killed by the hyena. And Salem loves the theatrics, so you know that bitch is going wild. And Salem leaves, and he lets some of the demonic spirits free. Salem don't give a fuck about that. He's like, bitch, I'm just trying to leave. And the house slowly begins to disintegrate. And Salem's like, even humble beasts, the dogs, the cats, especially the cats, can shake some shit up every now and again. Life lesson, don't underestimate nobody. Whether they're running on instinct or cool, calm, and malice with, anybody can get fucked up when the right things align. And that is the end of The Chilling Adventures of Salem, the short story. As I've learned from last year, I'm gonna upload this whole thing in one big part on YouTube. Cause y'all know how TikTok like to delete.